Fair Hippolyta, our nuptial arrow draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon. But oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires like to a stepdame or a dowager long withering out a young man revenue. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time and then the moon like to a silver bow new bent in heaven shall observe the night of our solemnities. Go, Philostrata, stir up the Athenian youth to merriments. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword and won thy love doing thee injuries, but I will wed thee in another key with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Happy be, Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Oh, uh, full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander, and my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. And thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes, and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung, with feigning voice verses of feigning love, and stolen the impression of her fantasy. She will not here before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid, to you your father should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. Who is Lysander? In himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looked but with my eyes. Rather your eyes must with his judgment look. I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. For I to be in shady cloister mew, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. So I will grow, so live, so die, my lord. Take time to pause. And by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me, for everlasting bond of fellowship, upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius as he would, or on Diana's altar to present for I austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scornful Lysander, true he hath my love, and what is mine my love shall render him. And she is mine, and all my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. My fortune's every way as fairly ranked, if not with vantage, as Demetrius, and which is all more than these boasts can be. I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof. But being full of self-affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come, and come, Aegeus, you shall go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up to death or to a vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love? Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business against our nuptials. 
and confer with you of something nearly that concerns yourselves. With duty and desire we follow you. How now, my love? For why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which I could well, attain them from the tempests of my eyes. I, me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. Oh, hell, to choose love by another's eyes. Hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her home remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. And to that, to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and, and in the wood, a league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena, to do observance to a morn of May. There I will stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly I will meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena, whither away? Oh, you me fair, not fair again unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair, your eyes are load stars, and your tongue's sweet air more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear, when wheat is green, when hawthorn buds appear. Sickness is catching, oh, we're favor so. Yours would I catch, fair Hermia, ere I go. My ear should catch your voice, my eye your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue's sweet melody. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he still loves me. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty would that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. In the wood, where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds where wont to lie, there my Lysander and myself shall meet. And thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Fa farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Helena, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius, dote on you. How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair sheep. What of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this heat, pale some heat from Hermia felt so, he dissolved and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Is all our company here? Uh, you best to call them generally man by man, according to the script. Ah, oh, here is the scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all Athens to play in our, our, 
uh, interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince, say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a merry. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. <clears throat> Answer as I call you, um, Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready. Name what part I am for, and proceed. What you, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure to the rest. Yet, my chief humor is for a tyrant. I could play Ercles rarely, or a part to tear a cat in, to make all split. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates, <clears throat> and Phibus Carr shall shine from far and make and mar the foolish fates. This was lofty. Now, name the rest of the players. Oh, this is Urkley's vein, a tyrant's vein. A lover is more condoling. A uh, Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. <sighs> Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? Oh, it is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, Faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. No, that's all one. You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe, too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisney, Thisney, ah, Pyramus, lover dear. Thy Thisbe, dear, and Lady, dear. No, no, you must play Pyramus and flute, you Thisbe. Well, proceed. Robin Starveling, the tailor. Here, Peter Prince. Robin Starveling, you must play Thisbe's mother. Uh, uh, Tom Snout, the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus' father, myself. Thisbe's father, uh, Snug the joiner, you the lion's part, and I hope here is a play fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Uh, pray you, if it be, give it to me, for I am slow of study. Oh, you may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion, too. I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the Duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly. You should fright the Duchess and, and the ladies that they would shriek. And that would be enough to hang us all. That would hang us, every mother's son. I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you and twirl any nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus, for Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. <sighs> Masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to calm them by tomorrow night, and meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. There we will rehearse, for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw a bill of property such as our play wants, 
I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect. Adieu. At the Duke's Oak, we meet. Yes, 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 yes. tomorrow. Till then, till then. Thank you. How now, spirit? Whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, through a bush, through a briar, over park, over pear, through a flood, through a fire. I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's sphere, and I serve the fairy queen to do her aught upon the green. I must go seek some dewdrops here, and hang a pearl on the cowslip's ear. Farewell, thou lobbed spirits, I'll be gone, a queen and all our elves, come here anon. The king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed the queen come not within his sight. For Oberon is passing, fell and wrath, because that she as her attendant hath a lovely boy, stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet changeling. And jealous Oberon would have the child, knight with his train, to chase the forest wild. For she perforce withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet in grove or green, by fountain clear, or spangled starlight sheen. But they do square, that all their elves for fear, creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape and make him quiet, or else you are that shrewd and nervous sprite called Robin Goodfellow, or you not he? Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile when I a fat and bean-fed horse beguile, neighing in the likeness of a filly foal. And sometimes lurk I in a gossip's bowl in very likeness of a roasted crab. And when she drinks against her lips I bob, and on her wither do that pour the ale. The wisest aunt, telling the saddest tale, sometimes for a three-foot stool mistaketh me. Then I slip from her bum, down topples she, and Taylor cries and falls you into a cough. And the whole choir holds their hips and laugh, and waxen in their mirth and knees and swear. A memory hour was never wasted there. But room fairy, here comes Oberon. And here, my mistress, would that you were gone. You met by moonlight, proud Titania. What, jealous Oberon? Very skip hence, I have forsworn his bed and company. Tarry, rash, wanton. Am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votaress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side, and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands. She, being mortal of that boy, did die, and for her sake do I rear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within these woods intend you to stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy and I'll go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away. We shall tide downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way then. But that shall not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle Puck, come hither. Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, 
and be thou here again ere the Leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle around the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania while she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear their conference. I love thee not. Therefore, pursue me not. Now, where is Lysander and fair Hermia? One I shall slay, and the other slayeth me. Thou toldst me they were stolen onto this wood. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. But yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or do I rather, in the plainest truth, tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? And even for that do I love you the more. I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, only give me leave, unworthy as I am to follow you. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. You do impeach your modesty too much. To leave the city and to commit yourself into the hands of one who loves you not, I'll, I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. Run when you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies and Daphne holds the chase. I will not stay thy questions. Let me go, or if thou follow me, do not believe but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. I'll follow thee and to make a heaven of hell, to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. Oh, I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox lips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. With the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and fill her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth anoint his eyes but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady oh, thou shalt know the man by the athenian garments he hath on but effect it with some care that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love and look thou meet me ere the first cock crow fear not my lord your servant shall do so Come, now a roundel and a fairy song. Then, for the third part of a minute hence, some to kill cankers in the must rose buds, some war with rare mice for their leathern wing to make my small elves' coats, 
And some keep back the clamorous owl that nightly hoots and wonders at our quaint spirits. Sing me now asleep, then to your offices let me rest. seest when thou dost wake do it for thy true love take love and languish for his sake be it ounce or cat or bear hard or boar with bristled hair in thy eye that shall appear when thou wakest it is thy dear wake when some vile thing is near Fair love, you faint with wandering in the wood, and to speak troth, I have forgot our way. We'll rest us, Hermia, if you think it right, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you out of bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both, one heart, one bed, two bosoms, one troth. <laughs> Nay, good Lysander, <laughs> for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet, do not lie so near. <laughs> oh, take the sense, sweet, of my innocence. <laughs> Gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further off in human modesty. Such separation, as may well be said, becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. So far be distant and... Good night, sweet friend. Thy love near altar till thy sweet life end. Amen. Amen to that fair prayer, say I. And end life when I end loyalty. Here is my bed. Sleep give thee all his rest. Who is here? Weeds of Athen he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid, and here the maiden, sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul, she does not lie in this lack love, this kill courtesy. Churl upon thy eyes I throw, all the power this charm doth owe. When thou wakest, let love forbid, sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. Stay, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence, do not haunt me thus. Oh, wilt thou, darkling, leave me, do not so. Stay on thy peril, I alone will go. Oh. I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy is Hermia where to or she lies, for she hath blessed and attracted eyes. Oh, how came her eyes so bright? Not the salt tears. If so, my eyes are oftener washed than hers. No, 
No, I am as ugly as a bear. For beasts that meet me do run away for fear. But who is here? Lysander on the ground, dead or asleep? I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. And run through fire, I will, for thy sweet sake. Transparent Helena, nature shows art that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. No, do not say so, Lysander, say not so. What though he love your Hermia, Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you, then be content. Content with Hermia? No. No, I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not with Hermia, but Helena I love. Who will not change a raven for a dove? <laughs> Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hand did I deserve this scorn? It's not enough. It's not enough young man, that I did never know, nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius eye, but you must flout my insufficiency? Good troth, you do me wrong, good sooth you do, in such disdainful manner me to woo. But fare you well, for forth I must confess, I thought you lord of more true gentleness. Oh, that lady of one man refused, should of another therefore be abused. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayest thou come Lysander near. Now, all my powers address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Help me, Lysander, help me! Do thy best to pluck this crawling serpent from my breast! Oh, by me, for pity, what a dream was here. Lysander, look how I do quake with fear. He thought a serpent ate my heart away, and you sat smiling at its cruel prey. Lysander, what removed? Lysander, Lord, what out of hearing, gone? No sound, no word? Alack, where are you? No? Then I will perceive you not at nigh, either death or I'll find you immediately. Are we all met? Pat. And here's a marvelous, convenient place for our rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage. Does this Hawthorne break our bring house? And we will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Peter Quince. What sayest thou, Buffy Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? My Larkin, a perilous fear. I believe we must keep the killing out when all is done. Not a wit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And, for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. Who put them out of fear? Well, we will have such a prologue, and it shall be written in eight and six. No, make it two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. Will not the ladies be afraid of a lion? I fear it, I promise you. Masters. You ought to consider with yourselves to bring in 
God shield us, a lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful wildfowl than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must but tell that he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And he himself must speak through, uh, saying thus, or to the same defect, uh, ladies, or fair ladies, I would wish you, or I would request you, or I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man as other men are. And there, indeed, let him name his name and tell them plainly he is Snug the Joiner. Well, it shall be so, but there's um, two hard things. That is to bring the moonlight into a chamber, for you know Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Let the moon shine the night we play our play. Oh, a calendar, a calendar. Uh, look in the almanac, find out moonshine, find out moonshine. Yes, it doth shine that night. Why, then you may leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play open, and the moon may shine in at the casement. Aye, or, or else one come in with a bush of thorns and, and a lantern, and, and say he comes to disfigure or, or present the person of moonshine, then... There is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber. For, for Pyramus and Thisbe says the story did talk through the, the chink of a wall. Some man or other must present wall. And let him have some plaster or some loam or some uh, rough cast about him to signify wall. And let him hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. Ah, if that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down every mother's son and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that break, and so everyone according to his cue. What hempen homespuns have we swaggering here? So near the fat cradle of the fairy queen? What? A play toward? I'll be an actor, an auditor too, if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus. Thisbe, stand forth. Thisbe. The flowers of odious savor sweet. Odors, odors. Odors savor sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest Thisbe dear. But hark, a voice. Stay thou but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. Stranger Pyramus than ever played here. Uh, must I speak now? Aye, Mary, you must, for you must under, understand he goes but to see a noise that he has heard and is to come again. Most radiant pyramus, most lily white of hue, of color like the red rose on triumphant briar. I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Ninus tomb, man. Why, you must not speak that yet that you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your part at once. Uh, cues and all Pyramus enter. Your cue is past. Oh. As true as truest horse that yet would never tire. If I were fair, Thisbe, I were only thine. Oh, monstrous, <gasps> oh, 
strange we are haunted. Pray, masters, no. fly, masters, help! The work I know. Yes, Why do they run away? Uh, this is a knavery of them to make me afeard. I will walk up and down here, and I will sing that they shall hear I am not afraid. The usel cock so black of hue, with orange tawny bill, the thrustle with is not so true, the wren with little quill. <sighs> what angel wakes me from my flowery bed? The finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain song cuckoo grey, whose noteful many a man doth mark, and dares not answer nay. Oh, I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamoured of thy note. So is mine eye enthralled to thy shape, and thy fair virtue's force her fault doth move me. On first view to say, to swear, I love thee. Methinks, uh, uh, mistress, you should have little reason for that. And yet, to say the truth, uh, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. <laughs> Not so, neither. But if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve mine own turn. Go out of this wood, do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and Sing while thou on crescent flowers dost sleep, and I will purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peas blossom, cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. Ready? And I. And I. Where, and I. where, where shall, shall we go? go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with pebble grapes, green figs, and mulberries. The honey bags steal from the humblebees and pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Nod to him, elves, and do him courtesy. Hail, mortal! Hail! 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 I cry your worship's mercy heartily. <laughs> Come, wait upon him, lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced, enforced chastity. <clears throat> uh, tie up my love's tongue and bring him silently. I wonder if Titania be awaked, and what it was that next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? My mistress with a monster is in love, <laughs> near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her dull and sleeping hour. A crew of patches, rude and mechanicals, that work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met, to met together to rehearse a play intended for great Theseus nuptial day. The shallow, thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their sport, forsook his scene and entered in a break when I did him at this advantage take. An ass's knoll I fixed it on his head, and on his fisbee must be answered. And forth my mimic comes, when they him spy as wild geese that the creeping fowler eye, or rusted patted choughs, many insult, rising and cawing at the gun's report, sever themselves and madly sweep the sky. I led them on in this distracted fear, and left sweet Pyramus translated there. When in that moment so it came to pass, Titania waked and straight away loved an ass. Oh, this falls out better than I could devise. 
But hast thou yet latched the Athenians' eyes with the love juice as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too, and the Athenian woman by his side. That's when he waked, a for she must be eyed. Oh, stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. Why rebuke you him that loves him so? Lay breath so bitter on thy bitter foe. Now I but chide, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, has given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being o'er shoes and blood, plunge in the deep, and kill me too. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get therefore? A privilege never to see me more, and from thy hated presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. There is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, a while I shall remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love juice on some true love's sight. About the wood go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens seek thou find. All fancy sick she is, and pale of cheer, with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, faster than arrow from Cupid's bow. Flower of this purple dye, it with Cupid's archery, sink in apple of his eye. When his love he doth espy, let her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageant see? Oh, Lord, what fools these mortals be. Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then we'll two at once woo one. That must needs to be sport alone, and those things do best please me that befall preposterously. Why should you think that I should woo in scorn? Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helena, goddess, nymph, perfect divine, to what my love shall I compare thy nine? Crystal is muddy, oh, how ripe in snow. Thy lips, those kissing cherries, tempting glow. Oh, let me kiss this princess, this seal of bliss. Oh, spite! Oh, hell! I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were civil and no courtesy, you would not do me thus much injury. Can you not hate? Me, as I know you do, but you must join in souls to mock me too. Oh, what derision! None of noble suit would so offend a virgin and extort a poor soul's patience, all to make you sport. You are unkind, Demetrius, be not so, for you love Hermia. This you know, I know. And here, with all good will, with all my heart, in Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. And yours of Helena, to me bequeath, whom I do love and will love till my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. O oh, Lysander, keep thy Hermia, I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. Helen, it is not so. Oh, look, where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Why unkindly didst thou leave me so? 
why should he stay whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Why seekest thou me? Could not this make thee know the hate I bear thee made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think. It cannot be. No, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful me, have you, I, have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? And will you rend our agent love a song to join with men in scorning your poor friend? It is not friendly, it is not maidenly. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not, it seems you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in a scorn, hollow me and praise my eyes, and made your other love, Demetrius, to call me goddess, nymph, divine and rare, precious, celestial? I understand not what you mean by this. I do, persever. Counterfeit sad looks make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink at each other, hold the sweet jest up. This sport, well carried, shall be chronicled. If you have any pity, grace, or manners, you would not make such an argument. But fare you well. It is partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena, hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Helen, I love thee. By my life, I do. I swear that by which I will lose for thee. To prove him false that says I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Why are you grown so rude? What change is this? Sweet love. Thy love. Out. Out. Loathen medicine, hated potion hence. Do you not jest? Yes, sooth, and so do you. What, should I hurt her? Strike her, kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll harm her not so. What? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore? Oh, me, what news, my love? Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? I am as fair now as I was erewhile. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me. Why, then you left me? Oh, the gods forbid, in earnest shall I say. Tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh, me. You juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love. You counterfeit, you puppet, you. Puppet? Why so? How low am I, thou painted maypole? Speak, how low am I? Am I not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes? Oh, pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I have no gift at all in shrewishness. Why, get you gone. Who is it that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave here behind. What? With Lysander? With Demetrius. Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she's angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when we went to school. Why will you suffer her to flout me thus? Let me come to her. Get you gone, you dwarf. You minimus of hindering not grass made. You bead, you acorn. You are too officious. In her behalf that scorns your services, yet her alone speak of Helena. Let not her part, for if thou dost intend, never so little show of love to her, thou shalt abide it. Now 
she holds me not. Now follow, if thou darest, of thine or mine, is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek by jowl. Mistress, well, this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you. I no longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands and mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. I am amazed and not know what to say. This is thy negligence. Still thou mistakest, or else committest thy knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did you not tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garment he had on? Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. Hide therefore, Robin, overcast the night. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath this virtuous property, to take from thence all error with his might, and make his eyeballs roll with wanted sight. When they wake next, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. And back to Athens shall the lovers wend with league whose date till death shall never end. Whilst I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy. And then I will her charmed eye release from monster's view and all things shall be peace. My fairy lord, this must be done with haste, for night swift dragons cut the clouds full fast, and yonder shines Aurora's harbinger, at whose approach ghosts wandering here and there troop home to churchyards. Ah, but we are spirits of another sort. Haste, make no delay. We may effect this business yet, ere day. Up and down, up and down. I will lead them up and down. I am feared in field and town. Goblin, lead them up and down. Here comes one. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready. Where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Follow me then to plainer ground. Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, thou coward, off thou fled. Speak in some bush. Where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars? Sling the bushes that thou lookest for wars, and wilt not come? Come, recreant, come, thou child. I'll whip thee with a rod. He's defiled that draws a sword on thee. Oh, yeah, art thou there? Follow my voice. We'll try no manhood here. He goes before me and still dares me on. When I come where he calls, then he is gone. The villain is much lighter heeled than I. I followed fast, but faster he did fly. That fall him am I in dark, uneven way. And here will rest me. Come, thou gentle day, for if but once thou show me thy gray light, I'll find Demetrius and revenge his spite. <laughs> oh, coward, why comest thou not? Where art thou now? Come hither, I am here. Nay, then thou mockest me, thou shalt buy this dear. If e'er I lay thy face by daylight see. Oh, weary night. O oh, long and tedious night, abate thy hour. Shine comforts from the east that I may back to Athens by daylight. From thee that my poor company detest. Let sleep, that some 
sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye. Deal me a while for mine own company. Yet but three? Come one more. Two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Never so weary, never so in woe, bedabbled with the dew and torn with the briars. I can no further crawl, no further go. My legs can keep no pace with my desires. Here, I will rest me till the break of day. Heaven shield Lysander. Oh, if they mean a fray. On the ground, sleep sound. All apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. And the country proverb known, ev that every man should take his own. In your waking shall be shown, Jack shall have Jill, not shall go ill. The man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Come, sit thee down upon this flowery bed, why? I thy amiable cheeks do coy, and stick musk roses in thy sleek, smooth head, and kiss thy large, fair ears, my gentle joy. Where's Peace Blossom? Ready. Scratch my head, Peace Blossom. Where's Monsieur Mus uh, Cobweb? Ready. Monsieur Cobweb, good Monsieur. Get you your weapons in your hand, and kill me a red-tipped humblebee on the top of a thistle. And, good Monsieur, bring me the honey bag. Where's Monsieur Mustard Seed? What's your will? Nothing, good Monsieur, but to help Cavalry Cobweb to scratch. Ugh, I must to the barbers, Monsieur, for methinks I am marvellous hairy about the face. And I am such a tender ass, if my hair do but tickle me, I must scratch. But wilt thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reasonable good ear in music. Let's have the tongs and the bones. Or say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat. Oh, I could munch your good dry oats. Oh, methinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. A good hay, sweet hay. Hath no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the squirrel's hoard and fetch thee new nuts. Oh, I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep, thou and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies be gone, and be always away. So doth the woodbine, the sweet honeysuckle gently entwist, the female ivy so enrings the barky fingers of the elm. Oh, how I do love thee, how I dote on thee. Welcome, good Robin, seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity, for meeting her of late behind the wood, seeking sweet favors from this hateful fool, I did upbraid her and fall out with her. For she his hairy temples then had rounded with a coronet of fresh and fragrant flowers. And that same dew, which sometimes on the buds was wont to swell like round and orient pearls, stood now within the pretty flowerets' eyes like tears that did their own disgrace bewail. But I had at my pleasure taunted her, and she in mild terms begged my patience. I then did ask of her her changeling child, which straight she gave me, and her fairy sent to bear him to my bower in fairy land. And now I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And gentle Puck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he, awaking when the others do, may all to Athens back again repair. And 
think no more of this night's accidents, but as the fierce vexation of a dream. But first, I will release the fairy queen. Be as thou was wont to be. See as thou was wont to see. Diane's bud or Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. Oh. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. How came these things to pass? Oh, how my eyes do loathe his visions now. Silence a while. Robin, take off this head. Titania, music call. Music, ho, oh, music such as charmed sleep. Sound music. Now thou and I are new in amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus's house triumphantly, and bless it to all fair prosperity. There shall the pairs of faithful lovers be wedded with Theseus, all in jollity. Fairy King, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. Then, my queen, in silence sad, trip we after the night's shade. We the globe can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight tell me how it came this night that I was sleeping here, was found with these mortals on the ground. <laughs> Go, one of you, find out the forester, for now our observation is performed. And since we have the vanguard of the day, my love shall hear the music of my hounds. Uncouple in the western valley, let them go. Dispatch, I say, and find the forester. We will, fair queen, up to the mountain's top and mark the musical confusion of hounds and echo in conjunction. My hounds are bred out of the Spartan kind, so flued, so sanded, and their heads are hung with ears that sweep away the morning dew. But soft, what nymphs are these? My lord, this is my daughter here asleep, and this Lysander, this Demetrius is. This Helena, old Nader's Helena, Helena. I wonder of their being here together. No doubt they rose up early to observe the rite of May, and hearing our intent, came here in grace of our solemnity. But speak, Aegeus, is not this the day that Hermia should give answer of her choice? It is, my lord. Go, bid the huntsmen wake them with their horns. Good morrow, friends. St. Valentine is past. Bring these wood birds but to couple now. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all, stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the work? My lord, I shall reply amazedly. Half sleep hath waken. I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might without peril from the Athenian law. Enough, enough, my lord. You have enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head. They would have stolen away. They would, Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me. You of your wife, me of my consent, of my consent that she should be your wife. My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither to this wood, and I in fury hither followed them. Fair Helen, I in fancy following me, but my good lord, I wot not by what power, but by some power it is. My love to Hermia melted as the snow. 
the object of my love and my pleasure in mine eye is only Helena. To her, my lord, was I betrothed, but like in sickness did I load this food, but now I do wish it, love it, long for it, and will forevermore be true to it. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse, we more here anon. Aegeus, I will overbear your will, for in the temple, by and by with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. Away with us to Athens, three and three. We'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. Oh, these things seem small and indistinguishable. Methinks I see things with parted eye when everything seems double. So, methinks, and I have found Demetrius like a jewel, mine own and not mine own. Uh, are you sure that we are awake? It seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here to bid us follow him? Y yea, and my father. And, and Hippolyta. And he did bid us follow him to the temple. Why, then we are awake. Let's follow him, and by the way, let us recount our dreams. Mm. Oh. When my cue comes, call me, and I will answer. Uh, my next is most fair Pyramus. Hey ho. Peter Quint? Flute? The bellows mender? The snout, the tinker, startling. God's my life, stolen hence and left me asleep. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if, if he go about to expound this dream. Methought I was, uh, there is no man could tell what. Methought I, I was, and methought I, I had. But man is a patched fool if he will offer to say what methought I had. The eyes of man hath not heard, the ears of man hath not seen. Man's hand is, is not able to taste, his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. I, will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. And it shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. And I will sing it in the latter end of a play before the Duke. Peradventure, to make it the more gracious, I shall sing it at her death. Have you sent to Bottom's house? Is he come home yet? He cannot be heard of. Out of doubt, he is transported. If he come not, then the play is marred. It goes not forward, doth it? It is not possible. You have not a man in all of Athens able to discharge Pyramus but he. No, he hath simply the best wit of any handicraft man in Athens. Yea, and the best person too. He is a very paramour for a sweet voice. You must say paragon. A paramour is, God bless us, a thing of naught. Uh, masters, uh, the duke is coming from the temple, and there's two or three lords and ladies more married. 
If our sport had gone forward, we had all been made men. Where are these lads? Where are these hearts? <gasps> oh! Gracious <laughs> day, oh most happy hour. Masters, I am to discourse wonders, but ask me not what, for if I tell you I am no true Athenian, I will tell you everything right as it fell out. Let us hear, sweet bottom. Not a word of me. All that I will tell you is that the Duke hath dined. Get your apparel together. Good strings to your beards, new ribbons to your pumps. Meet presently at the palace. Every man look o'er his part, for the short and the long is our play is preferred. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! Well In any case, let this be have clean linen. And let not him that plays the lion pair his nails, for they shall hang out for the lion's claws. Mm. And, most dear actors, eat no onions nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet breath. And I do not doubt but to hear them say it is a sweet comedy. Mm. No more words. Away! Go! Away! Go away! Yeah, yeah. away. It is strange, my Theseus, that these lovers speak of. More strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen have such seething brains, such shaping fantasies that apprehend more than cool reason ever comprehends. Such tricks hath strong imagination, that if it would but apprehend some joy, it comprehends some bringer of that joy or in the night imagining some fear. How easy is a bush supposed to bear? But all the story of the night told over and all their minds transfigured so together, more witnesseth than fancies images and, and grows to something of great constancy, but howsoever strange and admirable. Here come the lovers full of joy and mirth. Joy, gentle friends, come now. What masks, what dances shall we have to wear away this long age of three hours between our after supper and bedtime? Where is the usual manager of mirth? What revels are in hand? Is there no play to pass the anguish of a torturing hour? Call Philostrata. Where, my Theseus? What mask, what music? How shall we beguile the lazy time if not with some delight? A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I have ever known a play. But by ten words, my lord, it is much too long, which makes it tedious. For in all the play there is not one word apt, one player fitted. And tragical, my noble lord, it is, for Pyramus therein doth kill himself. Which, when I saw rehearsed, I must confess, made mine eyes water. But more merry tears the passion of loud laughter never shed. What? Are they that do play it? Hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which have never labored in their minds till now, and now have toiled their unbreathed memories in this same play against your nuptial. And we will hear it. No, my lord, it is not for you. I have heard it through, and it is nothing, nothing at all. I will hear the play. Go, bring them in, and... Take your places. I love not to see wretchedness o'ercharged and duty in his service perishing. Why, gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. He says they can do nothing in this kind. The kind are we to give them thanks for nothing. Our sport shall be to take what they mistake. So please do grace. The prologue is addressed. Let him approach. If we offend, it is with our good will. You should think we come not to offend, but with good will, to show our simple skill that is the true beginning of our end. <laughs> Gentles, Perhaps you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth make all things plain. 
This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady Thisbe is certain. This man with lime and rough cast doth present wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder. And through walls chink, poor souls, they are content to whisper, at the which let no man wonder. This man with lantern, dog, and bush of thorn presenteth moonshine. For if you will know by moonshine, did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus' tomb, there to woo? <laughs> this grisly beast, which lion hight by name, the trusty Thisbe, coming first by night, did scare away or rather did affright, and as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lion, vile, with bloody mouth, did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, smooth and tall, and finds trusty Thisbe's mantle slain, that with blade, with bloody blameful, he bravely broached his boiling bloody breast. And Thisbe, tarrying in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let lion, moonshine, wall, and lovers twain at large discourse while here they do remain. And in the same interlude it doth befall that I, one snout by name, present a wall. And so such a wall as I would have you think, that it, in it had a crannied hole or chink, through which the lovers Pyramus and Thisbe do often whisper very secretly. Pyramus draws near the wall, Silence! O oh, grim-looked night! O oh, night with you so black! O oh, night, whichever art when day is not! O oh, night, O oh, night, alack, alack, alack! I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot! And thou, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely wall, that standest between her father's ground and mine. Thou wall, O wall, O sweet and lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink through with mine eyne. Thanks, courteous wall, Jove shield thee well for this. But what see I? No Thisbe do I see. O oh, wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss, cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. The wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. Oh, no, in truth, sir, he should not. Uh, deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. Uh, she is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. Uh, you shall see. It will fall pat as I told you. Uh, yonder she comes. O oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair Pyramus and me. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones, thy stones with lime and hair knit up in thee. I see your voice. Now will I to the chink to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe! My love, thou art my love, I think. Oh, kiss me through the whole of this vile wall. I kiss the walls whole, not your lips at all. Wilt thou at Nini's tomb meet me straightway? Tide life! Yes, I come without delay. 
And thus have I, the wall, my part discharged so, and being done, the wall thus go. This is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. <laughs> the best in this kind are but shadows, and the worst are no worse, if imagination amend them. It must be your imagination then, and not theirs. <laughs> if we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. Here come two noble beasts in, a man and a lion. You, ladies, you whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on the floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here, when lion rough in wildest rage doth roar. Then now know I that once snug the joiner am a lion fell, nor else no lion's dam, for it should be as lion come in strife into this place, uh, twere pity on my life. A very gentle beast of a good conscience. Now, let us listen to the moon. This lanthorn doth the horned moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. This lanthorn doth the horned moon present. Myself, the man near the moon, that seems to be. This is the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the lanthorn. How else is the man in the moon? I'm aweary of this moon, what he would change. Proceed, moon. All that I have to say is to tell you that the lanthorn is the moon. I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush, my thorn bush, and this dog, my dog. Oh, here comes Thisbe. Mm -hmm. This is old Ninny's tomb. Where is my love? Oh. Well, Lion. Well, well run, Thisbe. Well shown, Moon. Truly the moon shines with a good grace. Well mouse, Lion. And so the lion vanished. And then came Pyramus. Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious golden glittering gleams, I trust to take of truest his be sight. But stay, O oh, spite, but mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here. Eyes, do you see? How can it be? Oh, dainty duck, oh dear, thy mantle good, what stained with blood? <laughs> Approach, ye furies fell. O oh, fates, come, come. Cut thread and thrum. Quell, crush, conclude, and quell. This passion and the death of a dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. Beshew my heart, but I pity the man. Oh. Wherefore, nature, didst thou lions frame? Since lion vile hath here deflowered, my dear, which is, no, no, which was the fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer. Come, tears, confound, out sword and wound wound the pop of Pyramus. I that left pop where heart doth hop. <laughs> Thus die I. Thus. 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 
Now am I dead? Now am I fled? My soul is in the sky. Tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Now, die, 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 die. How chance Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her lover? She will find him by starlight. Here she comes, and her passion ends the play. We think she should not use a long one for such a pyramus. I hope she will be brief. Asleep, my love? What? Dead, my dove? Oh, pyramus! Quite dumb. Dead. Oh, dead? A tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. These my lips. Oh, this cherry nose. These yellow cowslip cheeks are gone. Are gone. Lovers make moan. His eyes were green as leeks. Tongue, not a word. Come, trusty sword. Come, blade, my breast in view. And farewell, friends. Thus is the ends. <sighs> Moonshine and Lion are left to bury the dead. Aye, and uh, the wall too. Uh, no, assure you, the wall is down that parted their fathers. Uh, will it please you to see the epilogue or to hear a Bergamask dance between two of our company? No epilogue, I pray you, for your play needs no excuse. Never excuse, for when the players are all dead, there needs none to be blamed. Iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve. Lovers to bed, tis almost fairy time. I fear we shall outsleep the coming morn as much as we this night have overwatched. This palpable gross play hath well beguiled the heavy gate of night. Sweet friends, to bed. A fortnight hold we this solemnity in nightly revels and new jollity. Now the hungry lion roars, and the wolf, the howls, the moon, all with weary task foredone, now the wasted brands do glow, whilst the screech owl, screeching loud, puts the wretch in remembrance of a shroud. Now it is that time of night, that the graves all gaping wide, every one lets forth the sprite in the churchway paths to glide. And we fairies that do run from the presence of the sun now are frolic. Not a mouse shall disturb this hollowed house. I am sent with broom before to sweep the dust behind the door. Through the house give gathering light by the dread and dowsy fire every elf and fairy sprite. Hop as light as bird from briar. And this ditty after me Sing and dance it trippingly. First, rehearse your song by rote, to each word a warbling note. Hand in hand, with fairy grace, we will sing and bless this place. Now, until the break of day, through this house each fairy stray. To the best bride bed will we, which by us shall blessed be. With this field due consecrate, every fairy take his gate. 
and each several chamber bless through this palace with sweet peace. And the owner of it blessed ever shall in safety rest. Trip away, make no stay, meet me all by break of day. If we shadows have offended, think by this and all is mended that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme, no more gilding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck, now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make a man dear long, else the puck a liar called. So, good night unto you all. Give me our hands if we be friends, and Robin shall make amends.